What's going on all you gamers? Here we are back with some more Aliens Fireteam Elite and today I'm going to be telling you how you can get your hands on some of the more harder to get weapons and perks in the game, why you want them and if they're any good. So if that sounds interesting to you then stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always, for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon? I'll bring you all the latest and greatest in hints, tips, guides and builds, and just some fun gameplay and reviews of the upcoming games. But for today, I'm here to show you all of the harder to obtain weapons and perks in the game. Now, I would say these are probably the things you'll be aiming for to try and do whilst you're playing the end game. You've played the game for a little while, you know exactly what you're doing, and you're ready to take on a slightly tougher challenge. Now the reason that I say these are probably for endgame, what you're going to want to do is play the missions on intense or above, so any of the late game difficulties. Once you complete them, you have a chance of being netted with the reward of one of these kind of hidden or rarer weapons that you cannot get through playing the easier difficulties. So first up, and we're going to jump over to the LEM MP11 Storm Surge. Now this is actually a really nice gun to use. However, it is completely different to what you'll be used to if you're using the other variants of SMG. Because as you can see, this one is burst fire. Very different to what you're used to. You're probably used to a lot of spray and pray. This one is not like that whatsoever. You're going to have a tiny bit more accuracy, a bit more stability, and you're going to be wanting to try and aim for those headshots with this if possible. All around, this is a really nice gun to use. Like I said, it has a fair chunk of stability and accuracy now that I've actually taken off the attachments and the damage is pretty darn good overall as well. But if you're used to that spray and pray style, this is not the SMG for you. If you want a bit more accuracy in your build and you like burst fire guns, this may well be the one you'll choose. But overall, it won't be doing quite as high damage as some of the other options. It's a nice versatile gun. A little bit better at some of the ranges but as you can see the damage still because it is an SMG falls off really really drastically later but you will be able to hit headshots with this nicely you will be able to get quite a chunk of weak point damage and it is a nice weapon to use for those slightly closer range activities now like I said if we have a little look at the perks you get 5% accuracy 5% stability and 5% stability again and finally a little bit of aim assist and stability on weak point hit for 5 seconds stacking up to 5 times so again it's probably not going to do quite as much damage as some of the other weapons but it is really easy to use and it is a nice gun for an all around build and speaking of those close range activities this right here the type 76 auto shotgun one of my favourite shotguns in the game. This is just absolutely amazing to use, such fun and absolutely devastating in the right hands and in the right groups. Now as you can see it's got 77 damage but don't worry about that, it shoots a lot of pellets and it shoots very very fast and very very often. The reload time is not too fast but not too bad at 1.83 and it's got a fair chunk of max ammo. The magazine capacity is 16 and the fire rate is what sets this apart more than anything else. This thing right here will absolutely chew through corridor fodder. I would honestly say if you're playing one of the later missions, say for example the second to last mission in this game, those corridors are absolutely ideal for this type of weapon. This weapon is all about doing really nice boss damage or elite damage, but even better than that, clearing out ads that are lined up or coming towards you in a really confined space. You almost definitely won't get anything better than this for just holding down that trigger, spraying down a corridor and wiping out everything coming towards you. You are bound to get some crits with or without trying and it's just going to do an abundance of damage. Also in the right hands with a gunner on your team or using overclock yourself, you can really, really notice the damage that this pumps out when you've got that even faster fire rate. Another nice thing I like about this are the perks. 5% reload time, 5% reload time, and 5% fire rate. And finally, another really nice one, 5% fire rate and additional 1% fire rate on kill for 3 seconds. This effect can stack 5 times. Like I said, this with overclock is seriously something to behold, and even without it, this is a really fun, great gun to use overall. Now next up, we're going with the Type 78 Burst Pistol. This one right here is just a really nice weapon to use. 
it has a fair chunk of damage at 315 per bullet, it's not got bad stability and its accuracy isn't too bad either. Also the fire rate doesn't matter too much because again it is a burst weapon, meaning rather than spraying and praying you're going to be wanting to kind of make sure you get a little bit out of that weak point damage and aim for the head whenever you can. If you can get enough stability on this, if you can get enough accuracy, this right here is a really nice weapon to use at those medium ranges. You definitely don't want to be using it too far out because it will have some fall off, but I find this one is really nice if you don't want to be using something that single shot like a Kramer, this may be something you want to give a whirl. Also the perks on it are really nice just giving yourself 15% effective range with all three of those and lastly 5% accuracy and 2.5% damage on kill for 5 seconds. The last one isn't the best to be perfectly honest but it is a little bit of a damage increase which is always good. Next up and jumping over to the absolute daddy of the RPG launchers is this one right here, the M12 RPG launcher. This is something that you want to completely stay away from endgame at like the late level, so for example extreme, insane, I would not recommend bringing this to the group unless you are one of the best accuracy, best long shots ever and never going to hit anything near anyone because the splash radius will completely wipe your team out. The damage on this has enough damage to completely one shot your whole team without any attachments, without anything. 2250 damage, it is absolutely ridiculous. If you're doing earlier game, say for example you were bopping it straight down to the standard or you're going into a hold mode, this is one of the best weapons you can have for clearing out adds and even doing some big chunks of damage on a lot of the kind of elites and such. A really nice gun to have in a team. But like I said, it will be a bit difficult to put into playstyles further down the line if you're trying those tougher scenarios and challenges. If you are looking for a lot of fun, if you're looking for a boomstick, you can definitely do worse than the M12 RPG launcher. That will pretty much knock everything over that it aims at and more. Jumping over to its perks and it's got 5% reload time, 5% explosive radius, 5% explosive radius again and finally 25% chance on hit to deal an additional 75 thermal damage over time. Really nice, probably a little bit of overkill there but definitely definitely nice. Again make sure you're in a team that knows what they're doing, knows what you're doing and don't bring it to those late game missions unless you're set out to do so or you're just going to hold down one choke point as such. Next up and I'm going to be going over the AM16 Grupper and I really didn't like this gun at first and then I started using it a lot, started to get used to it and now it's one of my favourite weapons in the game. It's almost definitely not going to top the charts for damage but it's so easy and so versatile to use, it is really really nice to put in a lot of builds. Now the damage is 158, but again this is a burst DMR, so don't worry about that, you're going to be aiming for those headshots again. Just over here, because I actually had some attachments on it, the weak point damage is now 250. That's not bad in the slightest, the magazine capacity is 30 so it's a little bit on the low side but the fire rate is nice and chunky. Also it has a little bit of stumble chance but I don't think you're really worrying about that, you're using this just because you want a slightly different weapon. This one's a bit niche as is the next one but I find this is one of the best guns to put in an all round build and you can really go most distances. As you can see here there's almost no fall off. If you wanted to, mid to long range, this is definitely a great gun to use, but it won't be for everyone's playstyle. I really think this is a gun that you'll probably either love or hate. Jumping over to the perks, and it's got 5% handling, 5% handling, and 5% stability. The last one is 5% stability and an additional 0.5% damage on hit for 3 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. So not bad in the slightest, not the most damaging, but it does make things a little bit easier to get those headshots. And last but definitely not least, this one right here, the Kramer Assault Rifle. Again, another one that I think would probably be one you either really really enjoy using or you don't enjoy it at all. Now this gun has actually got quite a bit of accuracy and quite a bit of stability, but it's how it feels. This gun just feels absolutely chunky when you're pressing down that trigger, it really does and you can notice it because of the damage, 207 for each bullet. Now the fire rate isn't the fastest which is the offset of the damage, 
but it is really nice to use. You can, especially if you're in the right groups with a medic or with a lot of stability in your build, you can get a lot of damage just from pumping out headshots and getting those really nice weak point damage multipliers. Overall, I find this a really nice gun to use and it feels like one of the best guns in the game for actually making you feel like a marine and chunking out that damage. This gun I find is really good for just taking on waves of enemies and knocking them down with a lot of stumble chance and that's the main thing about this, it is also one of the rarer guns in the game because it's one of the only ones that gives anywhere near as much stumble chance, 21% as base, as you can see over here you've unlocked 5% stumble, 5% stumble, 5% weak point damage and again 1% stumble chance and weak point damage on hit. This affects stacks up to 5 times and resets on reload. Empty your magazine, mow down as many enemies as you can, even if you're aiming for some of those tougher elites, you really will notice that this puts out quite a fair chunk of damage, is a really versatile gun, easy to use, pretty much I would say a spray and pray but with a bit more headshot accuracy and just a lot of fun to use in game, especially when things are falling over left, right and centre. Right, so like I said, in order to get hold of those harder to obtain weapons, you do have to complete things on intent, and hopefully you'll get them as a mission drop. The thing is, it can definitely take a while as it is down to RNG. I found running the first missions a few times over really helped because they were a little bit faster. And next up, I'm going to be going over the hidden perks. Now, I was going to wait to do this video until I'd found them all, however, I still haven't found them. So, that will show you how much of a pain they can be to obtain sometimes. It's down to a lot of RNG, and the only way you obtain these is through opening up those hidden caches that you find within the missions. Again, it needs to be on the later difficulty settings of Intense Plus. If you're not running those, then you won't be able to obtain these, and they are some of the best perks you can get in the game. Now, like I said, I've only managed to grab three of these so far, but I'm going to chuck on screen each one that you can obtain and let you know what I think of them. And kicking it off, we have Rampage. This is the Demolisher's hidden perk. Killing an enemy grants a stack of Rampage. At 25 stacks, your fire rate, reload speed and movement speed are greatly increased, but your stability is decreased and lasts for 8 seconds. Now, all in, this is actually an amazing perk to have. But I found it a little bit situational. If you can manage to make it kick in when you're actually facing those really tough enemies such as the Praetorians or any of the elites or armoured guys, this will help to melt them like butter. If you're not or it's Dan, then it doesn't work out in your favour. So I would say this is a really good one for certain situations, other times you may want to use the slot for something else. But when this does work properly, it works really, really well. Again, it gives you nice reload speed and movement speed and the stability doesn't really matter too much because a lot of time you will probably be using that smart gun. Next up, and we've got Thermal Venting. Now this is the gunner perk and what a perk it is. Overclock further increases your own fire rate by 25%. Honestly, the gunner is just so, so good as it is. If you're after single target, he is the man to get it done. Any elite, any boss, any tough ad, he's the guy you want to take them down by tapping that overclock and making your team an absolute powerhouse. This further increases that for himself, making him even more so the best single target damage in the game. Definitely, in my eyes, very much worth having and perfect for every situation you're going to be tapping that overclock for. Next up, and we're going to be jumping over to the technician's perk, and he has creative pain point solutions. You and your turret deal 10% more damage to slowed enemies. I really, really like this one. It may not sound amazing, but trust me, if you can fit it into your build for your technician, you will notice the damage go up and you'll be mowing things down a lot, lot easier because you're always having things slowed down. You're using your coils, you're probably using grids and such on the floor, you've probably got a few things in your build that can do this or impair their movement, you'll be getting that, you'll be having that uptime on that very, very often. Along with the fact that you'll probably be boosting your own damage when you throw out those coils, this right here really helps for the technician to keep up the pace with his damage and just do a lot of work one of the ones you should definitely chuck into your perk tree if you have unlocked it. Next up and going over the recons perk and we have red is dead. 
This one right here is you and your teammate dealing additional 10% damage to revealed targets. This can work really, really well. As long as you're using your pups and making sure there is the one that reveals everything, that's basically a 10% extra damage most times. Every time they're tracked, every time you can highlight them, and you're gonna get, and everyone around you is gonna get 10% damage. I really like this one. If you're using that on your pups, definitely, definitely chuck this on your tree. You will not regret it, and it will make your team a lot stronger as well, which is pretty much what the recon is all about. Next up, and for the dock, we have Neurotoxin Specialist. Dealing damage to an enemy will weaken them and cause them to deal 20% less damage for 5 seconds. I really like this one, the dock can do a lot of work with that. He also can have on a really really nice error effect with his trauma station, meaning there'll be a lot of damage reduction going on. If you're aiming for a dock that really wants to negate damage for yourself and your team, this may well be one that you'll want to look at because it will be really effective and it will probably help out an absolute abundance at late game for those harder difficulties. Now lastly, but definitely not least, and this is one I've been trying to get for the last couple of days, but still have had no joy, and that's the Phalanx perk, Aftershock. Shock Pulse leaves behind an electric field for 10 seconds, slowing any enemies that make contact with it. This just sounds absolutely amazing to me. From what I've seen in other videos, it's not the largest radius, but it says it's up for 10 seconds. That right there could be quite game changing. Now, if I'm wrong about this, as I've only seen it on the internet, then chuck it in the comments. But anyone that has this, I would love to hear from you, as I really want to do a build around this. I think it could be pretty special. This guy with the technician would really be a sight to behold, and I want to see how much fun they actually can do locking down areas. I think if you have this, make sure you chuck it in your grid, as I think it will be one of the strongest perks in the game, definitely for crowd control, and I think you'll be able to have it up almost constantly. It really should be that you can get the reduction in order to get that on the floor in the way of the aliens as much as possible, meaning that there'll be you and there'll be that between them, or you can just plant it somewhere else. All in all, sounds like one of the best perks in the game for me for crowd control and just all round defensiveness. Now one last thing to note about these hidden perks is the fact that a lot of people seem to think you can only get them on the class you're playing with. However, I have actually unlocked one with a completely different class. I have had a few glitches in my game, so I don't want to out and out say go and do it on different classes and such if you need to level them, because the general consensus online seems to be that you unlock them mainly when playing with the class you're using. So you may want to try and find a class that you really enjoy playing and then try and unlock them that way. However, I've definitely unlocked one of those hidden caches and got a perk with a completely class to the class I'm using. So maybe it'll be that you can just get them and it's all just RNG. Either way, definitely do not think this is fast and do not think you'll be getting them on every completion of intense or above because you probably will not. Like I said, I've been grinding quite a little bit for these and I've still got quite a few to get. Roll you gamers, as always I hope I haven't taken up too much of your time, I'm really looking forward to covering Diablo 2 Resurrected next, but as always for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, take care, I'll see you on the next day.